we we require six. Um, I think we're good. Um, I think I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, beautiful. All right, Pete, why don't we get right into the development project updates? Sure. Um, just a couple of things to a couple of new businesses. Um, we were just talking before the meeting. Uh, there's a new, uh, uh, I guess, bakery donut uh, business called Indulge. It used to be where Fresh Monkey um, was on the Silestein Highway. So uh, they opened this past weekend to a uh, great uh, fanfare. Um, 140 Silestein Highway, which is the proposed um, um, new restaurant drive through there is probably going to start construction over the winter time. So we've, they've got a building permit pending. So uh, that will, you'll probably see some activity on that. The Tilted Kilt building will probably start demolition next week in making way for the bank. Uh, they've got an excavator there now and the building officials going out there today to kind of work out some of the details. There's a river, ribbon cutting tomorrow morning at 9.30 for uh, the Keller Williams uh, real estate office, which is in the ground floor of the Borden uh, building. So if anyone uh, is around, um, obviously we'll be practicing uh, social distance <laughs> a few people at a time, but uh, they would like um, a ribbon cutting and uh, a little, little get together. So if anyone's around and can swing by for a few minutes at 9.30 tomorrow morning, that would be, uh, that would be great. Um, I think those are the, uh, the most timely things to point out to you. I'd be happy to answer any questions about some of the bigger projects. Um, Thousand Silestein Highway has been pretty quiet. Uh, Mr. Zubretsky is working uh, on, the, uh, on the auction gallery with some, with some folks, nothing specific yet. We got another couple of interests in the Masonic building, um, but nothing that I can really share yet. Um, just trying to think if there's any other big ones. The nursing home on Jordan Lane has been quiet, but as I said earlier, there is a developer and they are planning on coming in to planning and zoning with a pre-application review at some point in the near future. I kind of expected it by now, but it has not happened. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the commission on any other properties? Great, town guide and calendar. Off uh, to the races, Peter. Completed and delivered. We've um, distributed maybe half of them by now. If anyone um, would like a uh, delivery uh, and to help us distribute, that would be great. Um, so let me know uh, offline if um, I see Joya uh, raising her hand maybe. Uh, so if anybody wants a stack of those, uh, please let me know and we can coordinate them and uh, get those, get the rest of them out on the street. Peter, I have a son and a lot of friends who need to do some service hours. Is there any uh, ability for them to deliver to perhaps some senior living centers or some places that would be helpful to you? Sure, we could certainly, uh, you know, there's a several apartment buildings. Um, so if they, um, they have, I assume they have uh, ability to drive around town, that kind of thing. Unfortunately so, yes. Yes, so certainly we would be happy to tap into that. So if, um, if you want to connect them up with me, we can make some arrangements, put a list. Um, I don't know how, how it's going to work with COVID in some of these places, but nevertheless, if they want to try and get out there and uh, help distribute them, that would, that would be great benefit. Great. I'll, uh, I'll, have, uh, I'll be in touch and, and make the, yep. the, the connection. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions from the group? Great. Uh, good job on that, Pete. Um, it looks great. Uh, tax incentive? Tax incentive program. We were waiting for some information from uh, some of the surrounding towns. I did get some information from Rocky Hill. Um, so if, um, if we have availability in the next week or two and want to get another one of those meetings together, uh, I think I've got um, some of the some of the information that was requested at the last meeting now so that we can circle back again. So maybe before we leave today, if we wanna pick a meeting date, we can set that up. Um, the, the, um, my schedule after midweek next week 
uh, would be good. If, at Towards the end, if you want to set up something for the end of next week, I probably can make that work. Anybody okay. else would be, I think Tony, I think you requested an interest to be involved with that. Um, well, I'll make a note. Let's make sure that we just try to schedule something at the end of today's sure. meeting. Sounds uh, good. Stand by. Um, Steep Award. I don't know if Gary's on the call yet, um, but um, we're still, uh, let me just check and make sure no one's waiting to get in. Um, I guess, I, I don't know if no news is good news on this front, but um, um, we're still treading water with that and time is going by. So um, we've been trying to beat the bushes to get some of these development projects uh, in line to take advantage of that money, but nothing specific yet. Um, so, um, and I haven't heard from Gary that we've had any additional uh, deadlines or restrictions imposed upon us. So um, we're still in a holding pattern, I guess. Okay. Uh, Salestein Highway. Um, I, uh, is Gabe on the call? I, I, know, I know that Cindy's on the call. Um, we've got, we sent out a, um, uh, a piece to the group um, uh, that was involved in the exploratory meeting. Uh, it was basically a group insight worksheet or a GIW. We've used these in the past with other projects. I got great feedback um, from the five attendees at the meeting. Um, I just sent that out today. My schedule has been a little nutty the last week and a half. It will ease up next week. Uh, but I did send out a, um, a PDF of all five responses back from everyone. There's a lot of great um, information in that, a lot of commonality and some very interesting perspectives, some at odds, which I think is great. So we'll have a little bit of uh, information uh, from both sides of, of, of some um, positions. Uh, but I hope to schedule a meeting um, towards the end of next week. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm about a week behind on wanting to do this, but I've just been um, unfortunately sidetrack with a couple of things uh, uh, but again the feedback was excellent anybody else on the uh, I mean Tom Carson Judy uh, Abe, um, uh, Cindy Jacobs um, have been um, uh, Tom Carson have all been great anybody else who's interested in this um, I know Brooke we missed you last month um, you were um, uh, and we talked about you basically for an hour and a half so um, you can look at the minutes on that um, the uh, Salstein Highway Exploratory Committee is something that we put together and looking at um, improvements for Salstein Highway. Um, we're uh, in the process of uh, turning rocks over for funding. Uh, but before we do that, we're just trying to put foundational stuff together um, uh, to kind of find out where the group's head is at. Um, and Pete, if you want, um, the I sent you that PDF as well uh, to the group. Um, it may not be a bad idea just to uh, distribute that out to other members of the uh, EDIC to take a look. And Joya, if you'd be interested in joining, we're open to everyone. Uh, we're an equal opportunity uh, oppor uh, program. So let us know. Um, okay, that's it on Salstein Highway. Um, Pete, I know we talked a little bit about CIP. Um, uh, you can, once you share with the group what, where we're at on that. So just to refresh everybody, I, submit, I submitted two funding requests to the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee that handles the uh, CIP, uh, one for $50,000 for um, additional money for the facade program, and another request for $100,000 uh, that would serve uh, multiple purposes. Uh, some of that money would be available if we wanted to do some additional study work on the Silestein Highway. We also have to uh, conduct an affordable housing plan by the middle of next uh, year. And then it's unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, it's almost uh, 10 years since we did our plan of development. Uh, it's due every 10 years. So we would use that $100,000 for um, uh, to, to plan, do some planning for those three projects. Um, so we've asked for $150,000 in total. That's a lot of money for us to ask when I think normally they only give out $900,000 across the entire community. So we, it seems like they might be willing to phase it in over two years, give us a portion of it first year and then the second portion in the second year. So we're still waiting to hear how that 
ultimately fleshes out. So um, knock on wood and cross our fingers. Uh, but I think we um, provided them with um, some good information, particularly on the facade program and the benefit to the community, how many projects you funded and the like. So, um, so that's kind of the status. I don't know if Gary has a schedule for when the uh, CIAC will be completing their recommendations, but I think that's coming up pretty soon. And they normally finish up by the middle of February. Uh... Great, any more um, uh, information on that, Pete, or any uh, questions from the group? I have a question. Um, I, I, have a, I have a question. So if we wanted to advocate for um, the study work on the Silestine Highway, and I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for where it is in the political process, would just calling our, our council people be the way to go? Um, how fixed is it is the budget right now? I'll let, I'll let Gary handle that one. Sure. Um, the CIAC did, I had this as part of my report, um, so I'll, it'll just make my report shorter. Um, the CIAC did meet, um, and last night they finalized a recommendation just uh, it's kind of at two levels, one at 900, just shy of 900,000 and another one just at a million with the hope that maybe the council will be able to grant us $100,000 more. Um, I think in either event, we have a request for what they did with, and I don't have it in front of me, but if I recall, um, Peter, your total request was 100,000. I think what they look to do is phase it in over two years with some uh, commitment that they would phase it, uh, that they would uh, fund it over two. And it looks like in round one, the recommendation is to give you 60,000, um, which uh, should, you know, at the very least, we have to go for what's mandated and mandatory was kind of their comment. Um, and then in the second phase would include it. We did have some kind of conversations about uh, being able to um, figure out how to kind of make those funds stretch a little further, but I'll get into that with my report. Um, so from here, the they officially make a motion um, to make a recommendation uh, to the council for allocating those funds, and it'll be part of the regular budget process on April 1st. I will present my budget, or not April 1st, the first Monday in April, which I'm looking at a calendar, I can't see right now when that is, um, I will present my budget, which will include their recommendation for those funds. So um, the council is not going to be fully aware of the CIAC recommendations probably until April, um, but it would hurt. Advocacy is always a wonderful thing. Does that okay. 200000 that we have possibly for use uh, in interfere at all with this process? I mean, is it something that they, the CIAC or the um, town council could say, well, you've already got that, you know? I missed the beginning, which 200,000 for the state funding? Yes. State funding yeah. she's asking state about. Funding. Oh yeah, no, those are completely different usage, uh, uses requirement. We'd have to go to the state to ask them if we could use 100,000 for something else. And I doubt with my conversations with them, if they'd let us use it to, do a master plan or, or anything but a true development project. Um, so, uh, what is CIAC? I'm Googling and I'm coming up with Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference. <laughs> yep, so when we had that Silas Dean meeting, if you recall that, so they, they are the um, Capital Improvement Advisory Committee and they're, okay. they're, they're so uh, the town. Um, it's a town thing. Correct. The town department submit requests for fundings for capital projects for the next twelve months, based off of okay. uh, based off of a ten year yeah. plan that's created. And uh, these individuals are appointed by council, and they their job is to make recommendations only to the council on what they think. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. Thanks. It's a town thing. All right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Any other questions from the group? Um, Pete, um, I'm going to add item G, the business outreach uh, letter. Um, I think we're off to the races on that as well. 
Uh, yes. So um, everything now, the mailing, the uh, all the mailing addresses, the envelopes, all that kind of the clings are all in the hands of Minuteman Press now. So we are uh, hoping that it will get out uh, probably probably not this week since it's already Thursday, but uh, it'll get out in the mail on um, sometime next week. Once it does uh, go out, we're going to post the survey link on the town website, and um, and then we're we're off to the races. Um, we kind of kept it open in terms of uh, deadlines for submissions, with the hopes that we're going to get a whole bunch. We, we can always send out a reminder, but um, so we hope uh, maybe next week the uh, survey results and the business listings will start coming back to us. How do you want to um, look at the data? I mean, do we want to get together as a group and just re look at everything, a, a big data dump of everything we receive? What do we want to do with, with the raw data that we get? How do we want to assimilate well, Survey SurveyMonkey will um, generate a report. Okay. With all the percentages. The, the challenging will be if there's, um, you know, write-in answers, they don't get, you know, analyzed in the same way like the, uh, right. the normal answers would be. So. Um, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it. So there'll be a, but, but they will also generate a report just listing all of those as well. So we'll just have to figure out how you want to make sense of it or see if there's any trends. Um, so it's a nice little tool that will do a lot of that stuff for us. Great. Forgot about that. That's great. Yep. Any questions on the business outreach? We're, we're almost there. <laughs> I think we worked on this a year ago, pre COVID. Before we yeah. were, it was free, free everything. Um, all right, well, it's good to know. Um, item A under new business, um, the restaurant directory and then map brochure uh, idea. So at the um, the last uh, heritage tourism meeting, the members um, got into a discussion about what they could do to um, try and assist and support restaurant restaurants during these trying times, and then the conversation kind of broadened out and. Uh, there was a um, an interest uh, and a willingness to put some funding towards creating a uh, comprehensive restaurant directory of Weathersfield restaurants. Um, then that kind of broadened even further um, to discuss whether we should incorporate some of our neighboring towns into that effort. Just to refresh everyone's memory, we, uh, we're part of the four town Central Connecticut Health District, which is Berlin, Newington, Rocky Hill, and Weathersfield. They license and regulate all restaurants in those four communities. So they have a uh, large database of all of those restaurants in all of the four towns. I did a little bit of outreach and it appears that the other three towns would be interested in doing a broader business directory product to incorporate um, all of the towns and um, they saw the benefit of you know cross marketing our restaurants with residents of their town and vice versa um, we would we were thinking about doing it under the umbrella of the health district the health di district is also excited by the idea so uh, before this thing gets too far afield i wanted to bring it back to this commission and see what everyone thought about the idea and then um, more importantly, whether uh, you would want to put some financial resources uh, to that effort. Um, pulling together the, all the listings of all the restaurants is, is pretty much already done by the, the health district. So that information is readily available. Uh, we also have it pretty much updated on the tourism website as well. So there wouldn't be a lot of work to pull that information together um, because of that health district structure, uh, we would have to bring somebody in to design, whether it's a brochure or a directory, whether it's a printed thing, whether it's online. Um, but the idea would be, to, was originally to do a printed thing and then have it distributed at all the restaurants throughout the four towns so that people going into those restaurants would also be able to see what other restaurants are available in some of the surrounding communities. Um, there's some logistics to figure out how we design it how we lay it out. Do we do it by restaurant type? Do we do it by town? Um, there's some things to clearly think about. But as I said earlier, before this thing got too far afield, I wanted to bring it back to you guys. And uh, if there is an interest, 
then I would I would probably organize a meeting of the four towns, probably the chambers of commerce as well, and then see how we would share responsibilities and share costs. Um, budgetarily, Pete, I don't want to go right to the money, but I guess I'll go right to the money. Where would the budget for this come from? Tourism or EDIC? I think both. We would. Uh, tourism has voted to support this. We. Uh, I'm going to circle back with them as we figure out what the costs are. We haven't even fleshed out the cost yet, so it's really to, to see if there's a an interest, and then we would share the costs um, between all the partners. You know, I would also talk to the chambers and see if they want to contribute. Um, obviously to the towns, and then obviously also to the health district. Um, we do because of uh, the pandemic, we haven't spent some of our normal uh, budgetary items. Um, so we do have some resources, but once again, without knowing what the costs are, and it's hard for me to say what your share might be if you were interested in partnering with this idea. Well, we're up like $1,200 just on lunches that we haven't served for a year. So there's 1200 bucks right there. Right. Um, we're, the, living, we're living large. We are. We should start sending lunches. I was thinking about sending pizza to everybody's houses one of these days. I think we're going to do that. But um, uh, the, well, what does the group think about the idea? This is something, Pete, that we should formalize and vote on? I, I think if, if you... Um, if you are willing to do this, there would be a vote to support it. And I would come back with whatever the, once we figure out the financial commitment, but it would be nice to have a vote uh, that you would want to contribute and, and go forward and sponsor this. And then we would come back with the details. So um, that would be the catalyst for me to reach out to the other communities. Um, you know, I just want to interrupt here for just a second. I think this came out of another uh, organization or his uh, tourism company that had done like the best Mexican restaurants or the most, uh, the best comfort foods or whatever. So maybe it's uh, something that would be best online, but we could start with a printed brochure to get launched. I'm going to also agree online. I think there are plenty of ways in which we could um, manage um, social media efforts to get this list online to make sure that Weathersfield restaurants are seen in those lists that you just referenced, Judy, and some other things. The moment you print this and a, a restaurant goes out or goes down, it's already um, now misleading and nothing's more frustrating than trying to go find a restaurant when it doesn't exist anymore. So. Um, I think to give people the best Weathersfield experience, especially if they're coming here for the first time and they're tourists or uh, people are bringing family from out of town around is we want to show well. And so an updated online experience strikes but me I'd as like the best But I'd like to way. also try some of the uh, Newington or Rocky Hill right. or whatever and find out what their best dishes are. You know, I'm thinking uh, we could start with what's open outdoor dining and things like that best outdoor dining in the area. Um, I think that you're right, Brooke. Once we print it, it's already passe. So if it goes online, that's uh, someone is gonna be, we're gonna have to generate um, a website or a link to it, or it's gonna have to live somewhere, which is another item or another um, something to think about. Are we in a position where we could easily do that? Well, we have Jesse. Uh, who we do pay to maintain various things for us. So um, if he's willing to do that, um, but, and, and I think in partnership with that, it might make also sense to do uh, some sort of a, maybe it's a rack card or something, just letting people know that this is a way out there. You could scan the web link. It's just really maybe a promotional piece that says we've done this project. If you wanna see the inventory, go to this address um, so that it's also out there for people who might not engage in, in social media. It wouldn't be a full brochure. It would just be a card or something that you could have in restaurants, making them aware of this new resource. Um, could it be on the Great Elm? I mean, it, could we do a rack card promoting the Great Elm? Here's our town calendar. Here's some great restaurants. Here's some great shops. We can always add to it and, and, and it can be very dynamic. 
<clears throat> I think if since I'm pulling in some of the other towns, I probably have to, you know, rather than having us be, I'd have to think about how we were going to work with the other towns. They may feel differently. They may have something that they want to, but we could cross pollinate. It could be one place and everybody has the ability to connect to it. So I, I we haven't, as I say, we haven't really gone much further than just the idea of working together and coming up with a marketing piece to help promote our restaurants during these times. So it is flexible, but I think we have to, we can't unilaterally make these decisions if we're, we're looking to have those partners, you know, buy into this. I'd be curious to see, oh, go ahead, Tom. Um, I, I'm just interested in, in the health district and what would we call this? Because it seems a little odd to me that this would be a list that would be just of the four towns that are in the health district. Now, does the health district, do they do restaurant inspections or is that all state? No, it's and, all, all, that's why the health district is the kind of the umbrella for this. They uh, inspect all of them. They license all of them. They, um, you know, they have all of that information. That's why we came up with the general idea. If we're going to do something, you know, we talked about maybe just we'll go with Rocky Hill, but there's two other towns in the, so um, that's kind of how it evolved that way. So would they put their restaurant rating as a part of this? You know, I, it's like if they I get a, a C rating or something. You yeah, know? I don't know that we want to get into that level of detail. Um, it's really just a directory of all of the, without a qualitative, you know, we're not going to put five forks next to one of them and two next to another. I, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't want to go down that. But we might classify them by type of restaurant, Italian, pizza, Mexican, you know, break it out so that if people are inclined to look for a particular type of restaurant, um, rather than just by town, um, that was kind of the initial idea anyway. Because I would think that the health district would have some concerns about making it seem like a restaurant marketing piece if they have certain restaurants that, you know, yeah, they have problems they include, with. If they include everybody, then there's no question you know, rather than excluding anybody. But would they want to include everybody? Well, I think we, it's, it's probably all or nothing if, if there's tax dollars from each of the communities contributing to it. I don't know how you, you know, what the line would be where you would exclude people as and, wh wh whether you want to promote them or not. Um, they exist in the community, they pay taxes, so. And if they're unsafe, the <clears throat> health department would have already removed them. Well, but it's not, it's, it's, it's not about removing, I mean, they can ding a restaurant, I think over a period of time. And if all, you know, if they have, if a restaurant has problems, yeah, it's, there's, there's, it's still, uh, you know, I, I, it's not for me to say really, it's really about the health district having those concerns. I would imagine yes. that if there are a handful of restaurants who are, or perennial problems, even if they haven't been shut down, um, it's just, it, it can get a little awkward from the health district's perspective if they have the restaurant on their website and they're saying, go, you know, eat here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of logistics to work out here. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, and when you start coordinating with other communities, it gets even more complicated. So, um, but it's always nice to have intermunicipal projects and cooperation. Um, and it seemed to make sense under the umbrella of the health district with the restaurants being licensed through them. Um, Perhaps but. we check with the Connecticut Restaurant Association too. They're around to help promote Connecticut restaurants and might already have a great deal of marketing up and about. And if we can just hone in on Weathersfield restaurants and push those and then, hey, also, you know, these are great restaurants in our neighboring towns. We don't have to own anything thing, update it, do anything. It's just kind of our consistent posts and pushing out of the, the restaurants that exist in our town. Um, we could put them on the Great Elm as, uh, um, as was suggested before, which I think is a great idea, but I'd be curious to know what the Connecticut Restaurant Association is doing that we can just leverage. We don't have to create our own content then. I think Brooke brings up a good point. I think um, when you get other towns involved and, and you meet and you get together, next thing you know, you know it's October and we're back to normal. Um, and I think the whole idea is try to get this done while the restaurants need some help. 
So I, although I'm very open to the idea of working with other communities, it, it could present a challenge time-wise. Um, I, I don't know, we, I mean, I, I like projects that we can get our teeth into and, and be able to move forward in fairly quickly. I don't know what your thoughts are um, from the group. Um, I mean, I'd like to obviously with Weathersfield first. Um, so um, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to explore. You know, the other thing too, Pete, is that, or, you know, if you have four towns that's trying to order a pizza, you know, I like sausage and the other town doesn't like sausage. And well, how, you know, next thing you know, you got to, you don't even, somebody's lactose intolerant, you don't even get cheese on the pizza. So um, uh, it's difficult to, to commute, to work with those other communities, but I, I'm for it. I think it's a great idea, but if it's going to be, you know, if it's going to take months to, to coordinate, especially if we do online stuff, I think the idea there is, you know, where we, where to, if we do it on, we can put it, our piece, I guess, on Great Elm, we've got that infrastructure, we could develop it there, but are we going to put other towns, restaurants on the Great Elm site as well? I don't know if that's, uh, you know, I don't, I, I'm an optimistic person, as you guys know, but I just, you know, I, if we can get this done quickly somehow, I think it'd be great. I think if we want to just push Weathersfield, we could go to, as, as Brooke talk, talked about, go to the Connecticut Restaurant Association, get a listing of all the restaurants in Weathersfield, maybe just start to push something up on Great Elm ourselves and still work with the other communities. That's just my thought. Any other yeah, thoughts, guys? Yeah, what are your yeah, thoughts? I'm just going to add one piece, Mark. So I do agree with what Mark just said. Um, I would definitely want to pro you know, promote, obviously, Weathersfield first um, as well. Um, and just looking at the Great Elm site and also in thinking about our conversation for the business directory from way, way, way back when, um, they're very different, right? We never, we decided that we wanted to link outbound to businesses. But I think what this raises is a question of not just here and now for restaurants, because there's lots of businesses that are hurting and having issues. Um, but just for the long term, um, the way we categorize things, like I'm looking at Great Elm right now. You know, the way we categorize lots of different, you know, areas for health and fitness or pets and animals, it could be very similar um, where we, you know, I, I forget what our discussion was, why we had to keep businesses out of the site, why we linked over to the directory that's in the Weathersfield town site. But I really do think at the end of the day, whether it's done in the town site or whether it's done in Great Elm, at some point, I think it really makes sense to start not just having a massive list of businesses, but here are your restaurants, here are your, you know, here are the doctors in town, you know, here are like all of the different categories. Mm -hmm. um, whatever that directory presents, um, really categorize it and offer it to the community. I think that's the hardest part is like, you guys were all touching on it. You know, I want Italian food or I just want food or I need, I need automotive repair. Where do I go? Um, you know, there's a lot of people, I'm always amazed at how many new people move into town and don't know these things, but there's plenty. Um, so may, I don't know how it works on, on, on physically doing it. Like I'm looking at, obviously we click over on the nice um, Weathersfield um, shop, eat, hire local link. And it brings us over to the directory on the Weathersfield um, main town site. But I really think that seeing a list of, you know, 393 items that are not categorized, it's a lot harder. I think this was originally in, intended to be a tourism boost. And it was, you know, uh, you're coming into the area or grandparents are here or whatever, and you want to find the kid friendly restaurants. So those would be listed separately. You wanted to find the Chinese restaurants or Asian restaurants, and that would be listed. And I think that doing it through the um, health department getting their listing and just breaking it out uh, in those categories, different categories, is a good idea because they have all the information and they would know which restaurants are still working and those that have been booted off the list. Let me just throw a tomato at this for a second. You know, I, I'm just trying to think from a useful perspective. You know, if I'm looking for a restaurant either somebody's told me in my neighborhood about it or I could go online or I pretty much know where all the restaurants are in Weathersfield. You know, I just wonder about, you know, the how useful is this going to be? I mean, it's not like we're, there's no marketing or access to this information right now. I'm just wondering if we're kind of reinventing a wheel here that we really don't need. Mark, uh, just on, on, that, on that note, 
we were just advised that, um, and maybe Gary has the exact number, but I think there were over 400 home sales in Weathersfield this past year. So you've got that many new families coming to town. Obviously you've lived in town for a couple of years anyway. Uh, whereas these out. folks are brand new to town. And um, so just one, one example of why you've got to keep, you know, that outreach and you can't just assume that everybody knows everything about, you know, you've, unfortunately you've got to feed it to people. Um, bad use, bad term there <laughs> talking about restaurants, but um, so I think we need to, you know, keep, keep these things, keep them in people's minds all the time and keep it, keep it coming to them. So to that point, Peter, what if we just provided some content in the great elm and people started pushing it out on their social media? So if we talked about all the great, uh, there's an article about the great restaurants in Weathersfield, and we can even have someone write a piece. We can find someone to write a piece about it. We all push it out through the town, social media, and all of us in general. Then people start to see it. It'll come up in searches. I think in all the social media savvy people on this call and perhaps in town could help us develop that. But I don't know that a, a listing necessarily is as important as consistent reinforcement that we have great restaurants and we have great other places. So I think maybe an editorial calendar about how we plan to promote our businesses might be a better way of going about using our time and limited resources. Yeah, definitely we need to have a, have a marketing and a promotional piece to whatever we ultimately you know, figure out what to do. Yeah. And, and maybe the compromises, we, we direct them to a, a, a PDF that can be updated uh, very regularly um, and make that the same link all the time. And we don't print them out and don't make them available. Maybe we have a counter similar to the logo for Shops Local that deals with our restaurants and use that as the marketing you know, idea behind this whole thing. So um, yeah, there's, there's all sorts of ways to do this. And uh, just a matter of whether you guys wanna, wanna do that or not, or you think this is a good idea or not. Peter, Peter, can I just say one more one more thing about uh, the um, the health district? You said the health district was interested in this, it, 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 and so it doesn't sound like it would take a whole lot of money if you put four towns behind it, you know, and just to create a listing to help the health district create that listing. I mean, they already have, you know, they already have the database. I would guess of the restaurants. I don't know what else what else they would need in terms of funding. I guess the the real funding would come if we wanted to print something or promote yes. it somehow. Yeah, the print, the printing is the uh, is the big dollar item. The designing of some sort of a piece and the pulling together the information, pulling the information together, it's all there. It's just a matter of sorting it, having somebody lay something out um, in a piece if that's what we want to do. Um, is you know where we would probably have to bring in somebody to help us you know design something. So and then it depends on whether we want to do all four towns or whether we just want to do do this on our own. Yeah, because I would think a printed listing with every restaurant in the four towns with a, maybe a description of what they are would be way too unwieldy, I would yeah, imagine. It's a, small, it's a small, it'd be a small book almost, you know, like Again, a little magazine is, kind of thing. This is not supposed to be just a list of all the restaurants. The idea from tourism was that if you want to find the best restaurants to take your kids to, there would be, it would be sorted so that all the restaurants that are kid friendly would be there or all the Mexican restaurants so that, you know, you'd have choices at the top uh, to select from. Um, so th the sorting is, I think, what's important rather than just getting a list of 4,000 restaurants in the four towns. Yeah, I but that almost sounds like then there would be like some sort of reviewing that would be going on as well in order to categorize each of these restaurants and where do you put them in any sort of a publication? Not necessarily. How the Hartford, how the Hartford Advocate used to do it. We could we could do, uh, you know, the best of. Well, but, but I don't want our staff to take that on. Let's see if yeah, we can Connecticut find. Magazine already does that. Yeah, just, I had one other thought. Um, a lot of universities, um, what they're doing now is if you walk, I don't know if you guys have been on a college campus recently. It's been a while for me being there, but my when I've got at least one child in college. Um, if you go around a college campus, um, it's amazing how much uh, they're really using QR codes all over the place, right? So restaurants, QR code, 
and, and you're just taken to your page, right? Um, pick, pick, your, pick your subject. I don't care what it is. Uh, fun things to do in Weathersfield or fun things to do. And just imagine QR codes of varying natures all over the place in lots of hot little spots, starting right at town hall and going everywhere around town where we have the ability to put them. If we have the ability to put 10 QR codes regarding 10 different topics in, in lots of areas that we can control or that you know business owners would be willing to put on their board. Um, the amazing thing was when I walked into my son's dorm room when he was a freshman, um, you know, the, the, old, <laughs> the old bulletin board that used to be uh, when we were around, um, you know, there's no more bulletin board. It's all QR codes in that bulletin board. That's all it is, is QR code after QR code after QR code. Here's your freshman orientation QR. Here's your other QR, you know, and all down the line. What, I mean, what if we had something like that? Then we don't have to worry about the print pieces. It's, I, I understand it's gonna be a little ramp up for some people because they're not familiar with QRs, um, but they'd get pretty familiar with them if they saw them more often. You know, so if we have the ability to put them in businesses or business, you know, I'm literally talking about like a sheet of paper, like, you know, almost like an eight and a half by 11 that we're allowed to post in a business. And it could be a laminate thing that we just post somewhere. And we post a whole lot of those. And where do they go? They come back to the Great Elm. They come back to whatever pages we have for landing content. I think to Brooke and Tom and everyone else's point, Judy's, you know, all of those things. And then I think we do what Mark said, which is like focus a lot more on Weathersfield. Um, I like, I do like the, the you know, multi-town um, approach as well. I think it's nice. Um, I think that, again, we have to be selfish because we want to help promote our own businesses. And I think promoting uh, other towns will bring us back to them coming to us. Yeah, there's definitely, as somebody said, cross-pollination. So I guess, why don't we do this? Um, the other thing is, this is our thought. We have to get the other three towns to agree with kind of what we're coming to agreements with as well. So would you, um, I think what I'd like to do is just take a vote on whether or not we should, we should continue the dialogue with the other towns. Peter, is there a meeting coming up? Uh, with the other towns or is it, uh, or Judy, maybe you know, um, is there a meeting coming up with the other communities regarding this? No, I, as I said earlier, I, I wasn't presuming that, you know, we would go forward with a multi-town approach. I did test the waters and there seems to be support from each one of those other communities if we did want to go down that road. So, um, and then obviously the logistics would have to be worked out. So um, yeah, the next step would be for, for somebody to set up a meeting with those towns, get everybody on a call and say, here's what we wanna do. And then see if there would still be continuing interest in doing it that way. Somebody's gonna to have to take the lead and I think it's gonna fall on me since I kind of reached out to everybody, which I'm fine, I'm happy to do, but I didn't wanna do that unless you guys decided that you wanted to do it that way or you wanted to do it just by Weathers, Weathersfield alone. I just wonder if the chamber could help us as well, because there are, the chamber already is like cross-pollinated to use the words that have been used. You know, we have we have members in the chamber from Rocky Hill and, and Newington already, businesses join chambers in, in neighboring towns. So they may already have like a step in place to reach out to people. And that would just help chamber you know, get members and, and connect everyone. I, we shouldn't be reinventing the wheel or taking up your time, Peter, to do something that, you know, may, we may be able to just assist with um, from the town standpoint. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't assume we would be doing all the heavy lifting. There would be sharing of uh, responsibilities, the health district and the individual towns. And uh, as I say, if we do this thing as an, an online thing and we don't print it, I think it could be pulled together very quickly um, without a lot of uh, aggravation. It's just probably just finding a, a designer who can help us, you know, once we get all the data pulled together so that it looks good and is sorted by types as we talked about. Uh, and um, we figure out some sort of a, as, as Marco said, an eight and a half by 11 QR code with some sort of a design so that it's, people know what it is and what they're going to go and find um, and it, and it's pretty straightforward. Peter, and are there, be, uh, just, tourism, uh, districts, I mean, uh, tourism associations or whatever you want to call it in all four towns? 
No. They all have an economic development commission, but um, not all of them have a tourism. Tour, oh, the tourism, tourism I think we might, might be the only one. They all have economic development commissions. Well, then that might make Weathersfield the only one that does it if it's if it's going to come from tourism. No, I think their economic development commissions um, fill that void for them. Okay. Um, any other discussion on this? Because I'd like to um, um, uh, make a motion uh, that we continue our dialogue on the restaurant directory and map brochure concept with the other towns. Um, and that we uh, collectively get together after Peter gets more information to figure out how we can move uh, forward on this or not. Uh, that is the motion. Can I make can I make a suggestion to your motion? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't, I'm Robert rules of order way out of order, I'm sure. Um, can we pursue that, but also exploring how we can leverage online um, existing online resources or perhaps social media efforts within the town to begin immediately supporting weather restaurants and then also explore the four town collaboration so as not to hold up promoting Weathersfield restaurants. Yeah, I see no issue with the with with stressing our, the local restaurants first and the other the other package a second. Um, that would be a very long motion, Peter. Are you able to put that together? So it sounds like it's a two-part motion. Yes. Something to the effect of immediately start uh, a campaign to promote existing resources that highlight our local restaurants. Um, and that would probably include social media primarily. And then secondly, continue to pursue the multi-town you know, cooperative effort because uh, that may take uh, much more time. Does that sound right? It does, that was what I said. Okay, so that was that motion was made by Brooke, by Brooke, I think. So, with support from Mark, I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Great, Brooke. Thank you for the assistance. Thank you for the good foundation. Um, okay. Um, affordable housing plan, Peter. So as as we talked about. Before um, we requested some CIP funds to do several planning studies. Uh, one of those is um, we have to prepare an affordable housing plan by next June. It's mandated by statute. Um, so we've kind of started that process a little bit. Um, we have agreed to partner with some of our neighboring uh, towns um, I wouldn't say not, not all of them are neighbors, but West Hartford, um, let's see, Manchester, Simsbury, I'm missing one. Maybe Gary remembers, but anyway, um, through the sustainable CT effort to um, help us pull together some of the initial information, share ideas, that kind of thing. But nevertheless, at some point, point in the very near future, we haven't figured out the logistics of that yet. We're gonna to have to form some sort of an entity to oversee the planning process for the affordable housing plan, whether that's planning and zoning, whether it's a committee, whether it's the council. Um, and we are probably gonna reach out to various community organizations and get some um, folks who wanna help uh, put that plan together. So I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that. If there's anyone uh, as an EDIC member who wants to uh, work on that, um, if that opportunity presents itself, I wanted to put that also uh, on the table as we go forward. So um, we haven't figured out exactly who's gonna lead this effort, uh, but I would imagine that there will be representation from a lot of the various boards, commissions, and community organizations, including the Economic Development Commission. So, did you say this June, Peter, or next June? Um, ne next June. I'm sorry. We have a, a year and a little bit to do this. Okay. Yep. I just attended two sessions, Open Communities, I think it's called. I'll, I'll get you the information. They just did a whole discussion on 
uh, the affordable housing and segregation and, and issues that, you know, the redlining, things that have been issues over the time um, in, in Connecticut. And it was enlightening. Um, so I'm going to send you some information. They may be a group to reach out to. Yes, to open, help, help open guide Communities us. Alliance. Yep. Yes. Um, they're, they're part of this um, multi town. They're kind of leading okay. with other agents, with other agencies um, okay. to help move it along. So, so I, I sounds like you're volunteering, Joy. <laughs> Hold on, how many committees am I on? <laughs> All those in favor of Joya, say <laughs> aye. Aye. Peter, I didn't realize I was muted. I shouted out South Windsor, I think was the one that you missed. Yes, I think that's right, yep. I, I realized I was muted, so. Peter, uh, so who is the, the figurehead or who's the top of the pyramid on beginning to coordinate this? I know you have the different towns and you're not sure what role different uh, commissions are gonna play, but who, who's, the, who's the top? Who starts the, the ball rolling? I'm waiting for Gary to tell me that. So um, the statutes don't prescribe, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, prescribe who at each town each town figures it out for themselves. Some towns, it's the Planning and Zoning Commission. Some towns, it's the council. Some towns, it's all, it's all different. And we, as I said, we have not figured that out yet, but I imagine no matter who's leading it, there will be the need for representation from various boards, commissions, and community groups. So if there's anyone in particular on EDIC who wants to throw their name into the hat we will circle back with you uh, in short order and start figuring out how we're going to do that. Um, keep me in the loop. If I can be, I'm, I mean, I'm starting the Southstein Highway uh, thing. I know I'm going to be involved with that to a degree. I, um, some people want to meet every day. Some people want to meet every six months. You guys will see uh, that we're on the, uh, the GIWs that you filled out. Um, but I'd like to be, you know, put me down to at least keep me involved at the beginning. Yep. Um, please. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the affordable housing? Any discussion? Pete, the annual report. I just uh, wanted you to be aware. I did put it in your packet. If anyone has any uh, information or questions uh, that they had about that, I'd be happy to, to answer that. Um, so I, that was done in anticipation of um, putting our budget together uh, for next year. Um, it's a great piece, a lot of work in it, uh, some pretty pictures in there too, which is good for me. Um, uh, a lot of work. Good job, Pete. You know, I didn't realize that it was that the facility back on where Puritan Furniture was just going to be one level. I thought it was going to be multi-story. I didn't realize it was um, going to be one level like that. Looks nice. Um, uh, anybody have any questions on that? It's a, actually a very interesting read. Peter was right. If you look at all the stuff that's been done over the last year, it's kind of mind blowing uh, because you kind of forget it once you get it done, but um, it's a great piece of work. Thanks, Pete. Um, any other questions on the annual, annual report? Mr. Manager? I, I have no questions on the annual report, thanks. Um, and would oh, you, you want like an update? I would actually like your report, sir. Sure, here's my report. Um, I'll try to do it shorter than normal. Uh, the, so I'll start off with some COVID information. Um, over the last two days, the health department in conjunction with our emergency operations group um, and utilizing uh, the community center uh, have run, we'll call it two trial uh, clinics where we were uh, actually providing or giving the vaccine to those who are most at risk and 75 and above. Uh, Wednesday was the first trial and what we've done today, our target was for a total of plus or minus around 50 to 60 vaccinations. Um, and so far, knock on wood, that's actually been very successful. Um, there's not necessarily our intent. I don't know if we're gonna necessarily compete against the CVSs of the world and the max vaccination sites, but we wanted to see uh, if and when we could run it and how it worked. And so far it's been working well. Um, as a second component of that, we've uh, our Dial-A-Ride partner, which is Curtain Transportation, um, has agreed to extend or amend their contract to allow 
for, uh, again, the, the most at-risk population to provide them rides, not only to a local vaccination sites, but kind of within our um, district area or our uh, contracted area. Um, and typically they wouldn't, you would have to be a dial a ride subscriber to for, uh, take advantage of this. However, they've agreed to extend it to those uh, due to it being a pandemic to those who, who can't get a ride. So it's, it's a nice increase. Um, our numbers as a whole have slowed significantly over the last month. Um, the month of December and beginning part of January were plus or minus, I'll call it horrific. We were looking at numbers as high as 200, 300 in a week. Uh, this past week, it dropped to about 90. Uh, I'm hoping that's going to be the general process that we see from a week to week basis at this point. Um, and that falls in line with what the state's doing as well, or in terms of you're seeing that drastic curtailing from the street from the state level. Uh, some positive news going on. Uh, our grant list uh, has been completed by the assessor and filed with the state as appropriate. Uh, just some quick numbers on that. And Peter kind of alluded to some of the increases that we saw our housing market. We saw an increase of about 18%. We're well over 400 uh, property transfers around 427. Average sale price is up almost 11%. Uh, the median price being up almost 11.5%. Um, so we're seeing kind of these huge gains are a little bit of a, we'll call it a market correction from 2008. Our numbers are actually higher than they were uh, prior to the market crash. So that's kind of a good news for us. That is helping to drive that grand list increase. We've seen an increase of about 1.17% or $27 million um, over last year's increase. And that's including real estate, personal property and motor vehicle. Um, these are before it goes to the um, EAA, Board of Assessment Appeals uh, group, but it's still nonetheless, it's still an optimistic growth um, opportunity that we're seeing. Um, a lot of people have asked me since I started talking about that, what that means to our mill rate. The fact is I can't tell you because um, I don't know until I go through the expenses. This is just part of a revenue calculation. So that's really all I have is some part of a revenue calculation. I can't say that that means uh, effectively yet. The major, so the major increase was uh, that just to note, I'm looking at some things as I analyze the grand list. Um, the major increase was in real estate. A lot of that has to do with some of the tax agreements and payments kind of sunsetting off. So now certain um, certain developments are now paying closer to what they should be as a full uh, tax, uh, as their tax uh, abatement goes away. Motor vehicles, even though the total number of motor vehicles went down almost 700, the overall value of the newer vehicles that replace them uh, have gone up almost 12 and a half million. And I think Peter just mentioned the economic development uh, going on. So Keep that. Uh, other things that are going on since we're talking about finances and, and a little bit about the budget, uh, I have some preliminary numbers from the state budget that have come in. These are just governor's recommendations. Unfortunately, I can't guarantee it's going to go up or down from here, uh, but the governor has essentially flat funded us from last year. It's better than not funding or seeing a reduction, but you know the reality is if expenses go up a certain percent and we're flat funded, we still have a gap that we have to make up somewhere. Um, obviously that is absorbed with revenue. Um, so is that the only component of the budget that from the state that looks to be going up at this point is revenue going to, or more revenue going to the Board of Ed, about $600,000. And I don't have a breakdown of what exactly that is, but my guess is it probably has to tie at some level with COVID and operational uh, costs related to it. But I, I can't say definitively because I don't, I don't have that breakdown. Uh, we are beginning the budget process. We mentioned, I mentioned, or Peter mentioned CIP. I won't go into a tremendous detail because we touched upon it, but there was a recommendation of 900 and a million dollars that will go to council with the understanding that traditionally we only fund around 900 last year. We had to take a chunk out of it because of uh, trying to kind of keep control of uh, where the budget was and going. Um, and so the council really got creative and looked to things that, well, okay, can we hold off? Yes or no. And we tried to stretch those dollars as far as we could, but I'm hoping to be able to make a compelling case for 
refunding it um, back to 900 um, based off of revenue that may be coming in. But um, we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. And once I have a complete profile and something that I can put out there. Um, uh, have been meeting with department heads uh, to kind of put together their budgets and their asks and try to figure out where we can, again, look for some cost savings. Uh, because Peter did bring up the working with the health district, um, I've started a kind of a bi-monthly meeting with uh, or bi-weekly meeting with some of the surrounding towns to look at uh, some cost savings through let's call it shared services. If there's opportunities to purchase equipment, share staff members um, you know, to prevent layoffs in that direction, we're kind of having these uh, with, with other town managers surrounding towns um, to see if there's opportunities uh, to really just uh, let's call it a force multiplier effect, right? If um, if they have a piece of equipment that they need to buy that we also need to buy and can make us more efficient, maybe there's some cost savings if we went in and, and shared. And there's a five or six communities around the table. So hopefully there's uh, some impact there. Um, Social Justice Coalition had a meeting, I'm trying to think the last time we met, had one meeting. but our most recent meeting, or the most recent two meetings, um, we've been able to take, there's anywhere between 95 to like 120 people who are showing up uh, religiously on these calls to really talk about uh, social justice from a 30,000 foot level and kind of work its way down. Um, the group has uh, uh, kind of focused on two major topics and agreed to two major topics. The first being to address community engagement through the acknowledgement of racism and other biases in the community and encourage collective action to determine what success looks like and an action plan for achieving it. And then the second group uh, to establish spaces for community members to engage in courageous dialogues and develop the skills to navigate interracial and intercultural interactions in a supportive environment. And I know that's a mouthful, um, but we're the, the groups have literally just broken out and they're gonna define what that is. Um, it, it's based off of a results accountability model. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you start with the end in mind and you slowly work backwards with what activities um, you need to achieve in order to, uh, or what activities you need to do in order to achieve that end result. And you have measuring along the way, you have, um, you have metrics along the way that you're trying to meet. Um, so we'll further define that. It, it, they're very broad uh, categories, but they're intentionally broad because this is a grassroots level um, and people need to kind of uh, scope out exactly what what that definition is. Um, other things of interest, um, in the last several months, the Department of en en Environment and then Department of Energy and Environmental Protection or DEEP, the State Department of DEEP, has been working with a number of communities on coming out with potential alternative solutions to municipal solid waste um, and trying to look at cost savings, long-term environmental impacts and environmental uh, protections. Um, we are currently working with our uh, existing vendor to see if any of those models would fit within uh, the town. Uh, I'm looking probably the first meeting in March or the second meeting in March to do a presentation to the council that summarizes what the state is looking at and then maybe hopefully um, give them some basic cost estimates of what it would be for us to implement different things and see where it goes from there. That may result in uh, another group having a conversation and figuring out where we go from there or maybe I um, you know, if the cost is amendable, maybe we can try a pilot program. I'm not exactly sure where that goes, um, but the fact is the town is looking at every resource available um, to find cost-saving measures, as well as look to protect the environment. Um, and we're very much at infancy stages, so there's only so much I can tell you other than we're, we're putting something together. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that's a good summary for now. Happy to answer any questions. Nothing. Nothing. You're muted. You left us speechless, even though you couldn't hear my speech just now. Um, anything, uh, anything else to add, Mr. Evans? Oh. 
Well, I talked about Keisha Farm last time. I don't know if I want to do it now and put Brooke on the spot, but uh, we are working with the university. I think I mentioned this last time Brooke wasn't here, but we are working with the University of Hartford to do, uh, if you recall months ago, we, um, and I probably, I discussed it months ago, we were trying to get a consultant on board to um, go through a, a kind of a visioning process as what could take place there in uh, the town. Uh, unfortunately, due to funding restrictions, it just wasn't able to happen. So uh, not to be dismayed, Keisha Farms Group kind of did a 180 and said, okay, how else can we do this? Who are the thought groups in the in the area who could be cutting edge or provide us some guidance? And, and uh, we partnered with the University of Hartford, uh, uh, reaching out through Brooke Penders, um, who has now worked it through a, um, a group of educators to come out with a plan uh, to work with students to kind of leverage all of the different colleges at the university or as many as we possibly can to look at what could happen there. Um, you know, so it's a training opportunity for the youth. It's uh, a visioning session for the residents um, and the community as a whole. And hopefully we can put a nice uh, presentation together when all is said and done and say, look at this is what the numbers tell us and this is what we'd like to do here. We had a great team meeting last night. We had some leadership changes. Uh, one of the professors who was going to lead this for us ended up leaving the university. So we have two really fantastic uh, people who have dealt with student teams before and community clients like the town of Wethersfield. So they know how this works. Um, we have civil engineering students on board, illustration, uh, communication, entrepreneurial, finance, you name it. So there's a lot of work being done at a, a variety of community or committee levels. And Cindy Greenblatt's been wonderfully supportive um, as has the whole commission. Um, so Gary, there are some things that we need to reach out to you for specifically. So you're likely to hear from a delightful student by the name of Alex Serrata. If you haven't already, he's one of the project leads. So, um, oh, and, and then of course, the whole uh, research around how you could use the space is very interesting. I told them to stay focused. There were some <laughs> great ideas. I'm like, no, they're not gonna do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Excellent, anything else? Mark, I, I actually, it's Pat, I'm, I'm, I've been listening. I got a hard out in four minutes. So I just wanted to kind of give a quick update. Yeah, kind of just going off of what Gary said, we are in budget season. So I, I believe Board of Ed had their first uh, first budget workshop uh, last night at around 6.30. I'm blanking on the, the next date just because I am in my car right now. Um, but budget's in full swing. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to kind of apprise everybody based on the, the conversation we had the last EDIC meeting uh, with, with some of your concerns regarding the uptick in crime. Uh, I did. I did end up meeting with, along with uh, town manager uh, Mayor Rell, Councilwoman Pelletier. We did meet with the uh, the legislation. So we met with Representative Bello, Representative Wood, and um, Senator Lesser, uh, and basically just we inquired as to what they're doing at the uh, at at the legislature just to sort of curb some of these things. So it was definitely an interesting conversation. Gary, I think you could probably agree with me. I think it was more of an intro conversation. Um, I, I believe we're scheduled for a follow-up, but um, if anybody, because I know Mark has a, uh, you got you have a hard out at a, a break before one thirty. But if anybody does have any questions, because I, I obviously the, the longevity of the conversation. Uh, if anybody has any questions or concerns, like my, my cell phone's posted on the, the town website. Um, I know it's a it's a complicated issue, but anybody has any questions regarding that or the conversation that we have with members of the delegation, please feel free to reach out to me. So that's where I'm at, Mark. Thanks, Pat. Uh, good luck at your 115 meeting. Thank you. For, uh, you were next on the list anyway. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Um, Pete, last meeting, George Oikel had to, uh, it looks like he exited um, pre, uh, early, and I know we didn't get a chance to hear from him. Um, George, are you with us today? I'm going to assume that George is not uh, with us. Um, it, is there an issue um, from the PNZ side on, on him being involved, Pete? No, he, he, um, he, he confirmed his attendance today. He may have had computer 
uh, issues, um, but he did confirm he was going to join us today. So um, it's been um, a little quiet at, at PNZ. They've got a meeting next Wednesday. Um, we've got a, uh, an application for the former bookstore at 446 Silestine Highway for someone to go in there. It's an Italian um, social club, a group in Hartford looking for a new home. Um, this may be a temporary location for them while they search for a, a more permanent location. And then a couple of um, preliminary pre-application meetings with some interested parties. So it's a small, small agenda next week. Okay, give my best to George. Yep. Um, Judy? Forget it, I'm holding down the space bar. Um, uh, tourism, <clears throat> first of all, I was delighted to see that I'm still on it. Um, there, we talked about a restaurant uh, directory map that we already discussed. Um, <clears throat> there was, uh, wait a minute, I'm on the wrong page here. Hang on. <clears throat> I got gotcha. you. Okay, back up. Uh, we actually had talked more about uh, the uh, distribution of our brochures. And these are the ones that talk about the historic uh, Weathersfield and they go into all the racks in, uh, on the highways and whatever. And we have 16,000 of those cards left over from last year. So we made the decision not to reprint this year, not to put them back up again, <clears throat> but to put that money into a promo video. Um, we only spent 25% uh, of the money that would have been allocated to that. So uh, that seemed like a much better uh, use of the money and we're gonna be moving ahead with that. <coughs> and as I say, we did talk about the brochure for the restaurants. And again, the idea was that we would identify areas with family fun, a barbecue, that type of thing. So it would break out um, different themes, if you will, for all the restaurants. Um, and I think that's it. Hopefully the promo video will be, become reality. And uh, that seems to be the, the way to focus right now in, in COVID. Great, thanks, Judy. Judy, can you do me a favor and just hold up your coffee mug for me? She gets the biggest coffee mug award on a Zoom meeting I think I've seen. That thing is as big as your head, Judy. It's a lot of coffee. Um, okay, uh, Chamber, I'm not sure if our Chamber um, liaison is on the call. I don't think I saw her number or name. I don't think so. Okay. Okay, subcommittee reports. Um, Pete, I know we were going to try to schedule um, a um, uh, a meeting around the tax incentive program update. Um, do you want to do something towards the end of next week? Sure, it's okay with me. Stand by. What's better for you, Pete? Mornings or early morning or later afternoon? Let me just see what's going on. Which day are we talking about, Mark? Thursday uh, or Friday or? Either the 18th or the 19th, preferably the 18th, if that works for you. Sure. Uh, I can do uh, I can do morning or, or later in the day. It doesn't matter. Um, if we could do like um, 8.30? On Thursday, 8.30 a.m.? Yeah. Yep. That's okay. Good. All right, I'll send out a uh, I'll send out an invite to everybody. Great. Okay, very good. Um, anything on marketing and communications or financial strategies? I I did want to at some point have a uh, discussion about our social media presence and going forward this year. So, um, you know, that could be a pretty involved meeting. So I think it would, it would be a separate meeting. Maybe, um, maybe the following week, we could set that up. Um, yep, that's fine. So obviously Tom and Marco would love to have their uh, availability so that we can uh, 
get into the weeds a little bit on um, how to uh, increase our presence out there. Do you want to try to get something on a calendar right now? Yeah, let's try that. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly flexible that entire week. Tom and Marco, what works better for you guys? Mornings or, or uh, Talking about later? actually correct? The week of the 22nd. Week of the 22nd. Yeah, Mondays are bad for me, but any 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 other day, Tuesdays or Thursdays I prefer, but any other day is okay. Tuesday's bad for me that week, but the Thursday is good. Thursday the 25th? Yep. And what time? Is early in the morning okay, guys, for you? 8.30? Yeah. yeah. Marco? That's fine. Yep, that works. Great. And that's the 25th at 8.30, correct? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. All right, uh, you guys want to take a moment, review the minutes from our last meeting of January 14th. <clears throat> if everybody's good, if someone would like to make a motion on approving the minutes, unless anybody has any questions. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Tom. Any questions? All right, guys. All those in favor of our minutes? Aye. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, do we have any correspondence, Peter? Sorry, no. All right. I'm going to keep hoping out. Our next meeting is Thursday, March 10th. I hope it's a beautiful, warm day. Uh, that concludes today's uh, dog and pony show. Thank you for attending. Um, Mark, one quick thing. Yes, please. Uh, last time I told you about Unico and their eat outs with the re uh, restaurants. Yes. We had done vetoes that night and we brought them in 54 meals that they wouldn't have had on a Tuesday night. Oh, wow. Uh, next Wednesday on the 17th, we're going to be sponsoring uh, Village Pizza and they've come up with a special with uh, their prime rib dinner with um, let's see where is it with potatoes and vegetables for twenty two dollars and if you don't want that you can get a large pizza with three items on it uh, for the same price with a bag of chips if you ask for them so if anybody's interested in supporting uh, village next week on that but the thing is if you want the prime rib you got to place your order on Tuesday so they can make sure they got enough you know beef in the oven and cooked for you and it's for pickup between four and eight that night. I'm just cool. mentioning you're ordering it through, uh, you know, the Unico promotions because we want to see how many people are uh, taking advantage of that. I know at Vito's, I saw Judy there and all when uh, I went to pick up and a few others. So uh, we're, we're glad to support the restaurants and we get nothing out of it. It's strictly, you know, to support the business is no fundraising for us. Great. Well, that's a great job. 54 meals on a Tuesday night is a lot of meals. That's um, right. So it literally is all that in a bag of chips. Is that what you told me? Well, for the next one, it's uh, a pizza and uh, a large pizza and chips for 22 or the prime rib dinner with potatoes and veggies for 22. But you get a bag of chips on one of those. No, there's no chips. There's no chips there. The oh. chips come with the pizza. No, see, it came with a, it was all that in a bag of chips. All right, guys, enough of the comedy. Uh, thank you for attending. Thank you, uh, Tony. Adios. Bye, guys. Have a great day. You too.